So welcome back everyone, Mike here. I have been hoping for a while now that it would get cold and freeze up. Well, the cold weather has finally arrived. Getting a little bit of snow right now and I just got home from work and uh, it's getting dark, but I gotta run a load of firewood over to the neighbors. Uh, Melissa loaded that load of wood up yesterday. I'll put that video right up here. And then this weekend, it looks like it's gonna be pretty cold, like in the 20s for a high, something like that. So there will be lots of firewooding videos this weekend. I'm looking forward to getting the ultimate firewood set up out in the woods. If you don't know what I'm talking about there, I'll put that video right here. But anyway, I'm gonna run this wood over the neighbors. And if you are a hunter and you like the outdoors, you're really gonna to wanna to stick around and see what we're gonna show you. It's pretty cool. It's all right, all right. Better days will surely come. I heard a thousand times, and I know I still will. How living life is brief, but it's some time seems living the dream the dream is living me like when your birthday came and you spent it alone I said I would make it up with so many hours on telephone I'd think you'd have enough but you hold on hold on to the wheel and drive me home it's all right Better days will surely come Did you ever video yourself at all? Because it's amazing because, you know, I, I watch other guys, you can see what... Now we spend most nights trying to make up the time we were fighting for But now that we have Just what we want Still we keep our eyes on the door So hold on Hold on To the wheel and drive it's all right, all right. Better days will surely come. All right, so this is my neighbor Cliff right here. Uh, Cliff and I have been friends for what, 20 some years? Probably 25 years. 25 yeah. years. Yeah. Cliff is a fantastic neighbor, and as you can tell from this room, he's a heck of a hunter. Uh, Cliff started a, a business years ago. Well, you know what, I'll let you explain the story here. Um, you know, we, I grew up hunting all the time and uh, wanted to find a way to be able to hunt a lot of places and not really having the money, family, regular jobs. So eventually I got involved in the hunting business, hooked up with a guy who was a senior editor of Outdoor Life Magazine actually at the time, which has now been 30 years ago. And I just kind of evolved from that. So started doing hunting trips it's kind of like, uh, I guess I would describe it as a, a travel agency for hunting trips. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. You know. And one, so anyone that's going on one of your hunts, you've known the people for Yeah, lots ever. Of, typically lots of years. Everybody's gotta be new at some point, but yeah. typically it's the yeah. same guys, yeah. Because I think what happens, I think a lot of people were probably 
you know, it's not like you're looking for a contractor. You can just because someone has a, a you know, a grizzly bear hunt, you have no idea. They don't know what to expect. It's a lot of money. Where Cliff really vets these people, knows them, and I was just looking at his new brochure right there. He's been in business 30 years, which is uh, really impressive for any business. But your company is called Hunting Consultants Unlimited. Correct. Yep. I'll put a link in the uh, description and you can check out their website and, and contact Cliff if you ever want to go hunting anywhere. Uh, but you've been where? How many continents? Oh, I don't even, I don't know. I mean, I've hunted pretty much all the provinces in Canada mm -hmm. and, uh, and actually Alaska on down all the western states and Africa, and, uh, New Zealand, Australia. Yeah. You know, around a fair amount. We don't do anything like in Russia. Uh -huh. you know, we don't go over there. Um, but pretty much everything else, I'd say. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think we are going to uh, take a look at some of these animals here. So where'd you get the uh, moose there, Cliff? Uh, the moose was from Northwest Territories. Uh, we've hunted up that country a lot, the Yukon, Northwest Territories. I think those are your best moose areas. What about the mountain lion there behind it? Mountain lion, that was from Idaho. And we, I don't know if you can see in there, but it's actually mounted on an elk because it had killed an elk uh, the evening before I got the lion. And uh, we tracked him to where he killed a bull. And then we ended up treating the cat later that day. And, and got him. So my buddy said, we need to mount him that way. I said, well, you're, you want to spend my money, but uh, it, 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 it come out pretty, pretty. That cool. is pretty cool. Yeah. So that was, that was the story behind it. What's that cat? What did it weigh? Do you know? 150 pounds. That's a big cat. Yeah. And I usually figure they're about five and a half to seven and a half years old. So it was a real nice male. And uh, we got two on that trip. Both of them, they were, they were identical. Yeah. yeah. Real nice. What part of Idaho was that? Do you remember? It was right near Salmon, up in the up in the mountains, up above the Salmon River. Okay. So, Idaho is tough. That's steep country. It's uh, it's pretty tough tough state to hunt. Yeah. I remember you telling me the story about that moose when you got it. Why don't you share that? Um, I had a guide with me. We we're up in Northwest Territories, and we were going over top of a hill, actually crawling on it. It was up on a mountain, quite high, and and he said. Uh, there's nine bulls down here, which you don't typically see nine bull moose together. But we crawl, I crawled over there and I couldn't believe it. There was nine bulls and we studied them. He was the best bull. There was two sets of bulls fighting. This bull was bedded and the other bulls, he had 11 cows. The other bulls were just milling around. So eventually we got in position and this bull was the biggest bull. And they, he got up and got in the brush. He came out, I got a shot and hit him. And he thought another bull had poked him with a horn because he just started grunting a lot and he came out of the brush. I'm like 300, 300 yards away, but he's just grunting and carrying on. And the guy says, just give him a second till he turns. I hit him again, and he went down. Well, as soon as he goes down, these other eight bulls ran up and got in a circle around him about, I'm gonna say about maybe 15 yards from him in a circle encompassing him. And then one at a time would just run in and smash him. And he, he was dead. Yeah. It would hit him in the butt, it would hit him in the horns. And this went on for over 20 minutes. And I, I, I started getting nervous because I thought they're going to break his rack up. Yeah. But it was about 20 minutes because they just felt that there was something that happened to him, and they saw it was a time to take advantage of the situation. And yeah, he must have been a tough guy on the block, and they were getting even with him. Yeah, he was he was the boss, but uh, yeah, somebody else took over. I'm <laughs> sure that evening. Yeah, that's pretty cool. All right, now we're going to check out some sheep here. What's that one right there, Cliff? Uh, this is a this is a uh, Rocky Mountain Bighorn. I shot this sheep in Wyoming, was able to draw a tag, so it's a big horning sheep, big horn sheep. Um, up here is a stone sheep, okay. and I got that in British Columbia. And then if you go over to this white sheep, this white one, that's a dull sheep, and that was from the Yukon, uh, Yukon Territories in northern, northern Canada up near Alaska. And then the last sheep is this top one, and that's called a desert big horn. And I shot that ram down near the Baja in Mexico, and those those four sheep make up what they call the they call it the Fenaz or the Grand Slam. So go over those areas again near near Mexico or in Mexico. It's in Mexico. In Mexico. It's in Mexico. Where'd you get that one? That was in the Yukon. The Yukon. Yep. And then the uh, the kind of salt and pepper one over here laying down. That was from British Columbia. Mm -hmm. And then. This one down here below, that's that's from Wyoming, that's a big horn. One from BC, that's a stone sheep. You know. And probably probably my toughest, I mean sheep are very difficult, but probably my toughest is this mountain goat up on top. 
the one up on top. That's from British Columbia. Um, they just live in some really, really tough country. So yeah, that, that, that was probably my most difficult hunt. The sheep are very tough too, but uh, each hunt's different, but, but that was a tough one for me. Right. How many mule deer have you uh, gotten? Any idea over the years? Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm not really sure. Mule deer are my favorite of, of everything I hunt. I mean, sheep would be my favorite, but they're too expensive to keep hunting them all the time. But the mule deer, I really, really like hunting mule deer. So over doing this for 30 years, I wanted to hunt a lot of places, a lot of species, the more I could learn, the better it would be for, for customers wanting to have a hunt. And so I backed off and didn't hunt mule deer all that much for quite a while. But now that I'm to the point in my age, I, I want to hunt what I want to hunt, so I'm back mule deer hunting a lot. So I, we've shot these, these deer in the last couple of years. My son killed this buck uh, last year in Colorado. And uh, we shot this buck on public land, which is not normal. Usually you're typically on private land, but that was a public land buck. The buck right above him, my son shot that one in Colorado the year before. And then these two bucks, I actually killed both these in, uh, in West Texas. This buck and one above it. So those, those are quite nice. And I, and I did kill a couple of bucks this year. I killed another Colorado buck and another Texas buck. And then I've shot them in other states. But these are my, some of my better ones. All right. So it looks like a buffalo, but it's not a buffalo, right? It is not a buffalo. It's, it's, it's a muskox. Muskox. So they, the, these live up in Alaska. And this one was shot in what they call the Nunavut Territory. Okay. Which is up towards the North Pole off Victoria Island. And... Uh, they have real thick fur like you can see if you put your hand in there how far down it goes in this because when i was hunting them we were talking centigrade as far as temperature degrees but we we're minus 30 minus 35 centigrade <laughs> so it's it's quite cold and their hair i don't know if you can see it but their hair is real long these guard hairs it's called um they're they're really a neat animal they're not they they're not that difficult to get but the environment they live in is just interesting and then you're up yeah. there hunting with the inuits um, you know, in the old days, they were known as Eskimos, but now they, they go by Inuits more, but that's what they got. And then also this, my guide, he wanted, uh, he wanted me to take a, an Arctic hare home. And uh, I said, well, you, you need to shoot something. So he shot that, uh, which we just call them rabbit, but they're called Arctic hare and they're pretty, pretty large. But uh, it's, it's, it's a whole different kind of hunt. It's a whole different kind of experience, but it's, it's interesting and it's, it's enjoyable. But uh, everything we looked at so far, and there's a lot more, but what, what was the most difficult hunt? One of the sheep or what, like, as far as, you know, mental, physical, being prepared, yeah, distance, I, you know. Yeah, I mean, Mike knows, he sees, I would hike with a backpack all the time to try to stay in shape, but the sheep are always tough. Elk can be very tough too, depending on where you're at, but the, the mountain goats are, uh, the mountain goats and sheep are the toughest. Uh -huh. You know, like we've done, you've been on mountains sometimes and you're basically hiked up in and we got kind of semi-stranded, maybe three or four days with no food. You know, and you're yeah. toughing it out and it just, sometimes it just takes, the, the one sheep that we shot here, this bighorn I shot, I spent eight days on the mountain and we, we didn't have a good system for water. So we just get a couple drops you know, uh, basically like every 10, 15 minutes we had a little container. That's all we could have all day, you know. Yeah. We'd set it there and pick it up at the end of the day and go on. But um, yeah, it's just it's just how it, how it can be sometimes. Where'd that turkey come from? That turkey came from Montana. That's that's called a Miriam's turkey. You know, we got a whole bunch of them right around here. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and it's funny because I have, I think I have five turkeys, maybe six turkeys mounted here in this room. And I've never mounted an Eastern. Really? Which is what we predominantly have here at the house, you know, right yeah. where we live. I've shot a lot of Easterns up in northern PA, but I've never mounted one. So everything I have mounted is Osceolas or Golds, like from Mexico or, yeah. you know, different types of birds. But, uh, yeah. Well, who's this guy here? This this is a this is what uh, a water buffalo from Australia. Um, they're, they're, they would be kind of similar to a Cape buffalo in Africa. Um, they actually can be pretty... Pretty violent. Um, it looks like it. Yeah, they, they are. And this, the, the guy did a really nice mount, has a good look to it. And uh, But that's another thing that's important too, is having a good taxidermist. Yeah. It really is. I mean, I've seen guys with bad mounts and it, you know, you must as well put them in your closet because you just right. don't want to have mounts. But What's one of those weigh? 
Like what do you weigh? This yeah. this would weigh between 1,800 and 2,000 pounds. Ooh. So they're they're pretty big. Yeah. I shot shot this buffalo with a 375, and it was literally five five shots. Really? Yeah, it was. It was. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. They're pretty tough. They're just tough. What's the uh, little deer up above it? Uh, the little deer. This type of half mount. That's called a coos deer, and some people call them a cow's deer, but it's C O U E S. And they're from Mexico. Okay. There's a few in Arizona also, but I shot that one in Mexico. And the white tail's right up there. That particular white tail there's from South Dakota. And um, I don't know if you can see the caribou beside it. Yep. That caribou also came at the same place where I did the muskox. That's a, called an Arctic Island caribou. They're very white. Um, that's actually a a really good a really good bulls high scoring for that kind of a animal. Mm -hmm. but uh yeah they're 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 quite they're, just, they're impressive and they're pretty pretty nice animal nice i kind of skipped this guy because i had no idea what he was but cliff's going to fill us in on it what is that this this is uh this is called a himalayan tar and my son actually shot this when we were in new zealand last year uh we went over to new zealand to hunt some stag and and uh some tar it's just t-a-r t-a-h-r t-a-h-r yep and uh so yeah they actually they become a nuisance in new zealand there are just so many of them now they're they're gonna they're talking about calling ten thousand really government's gonna call ten thousand uh off off of uh, the island maybe next year they live a real high up uh steep country yeah. i know my son said that he got to really realize he's afraid of heights yeah <laughs> So, yeah. Tar, huh? Okay. So what do you got there? This, this right here. This is a, this is a wolf from uh, British Columbia, and actually a friend of mine snared this. I did not shoot it. A friend of mine snared this up there, and then this right here is a Pennsylvania coyote, and you can see the difference in the size. Yeah. Uh, this deer was act, or this deer, this coyote was actually chasing deer, and I, and I shot him. But um, you can see the difference between a coyote and a wolf. Um, well, there's a huge difference. What's, what do you think that wolf weighed right there? Like 120 or something? Yeah, it's actually everybody over guesses a wolf because they have real long legs yeah. and, they're, and they're also long this way. But um, we have wolf hunts and um, a, a good size male wolf will be about 105 to about 115. Okay. And that, that's, that's actually a big one. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and your coyotes, everybody thinks they're. Great big too, but you know, you get a 40 pound coyote, you got a pretty decent coyote. Yeah. The, not the last time I was in uh, Yellowstone, the time before I saw a wolf. Mm -hmm. And I thought, boy, that's pretty cool. But I didn't realize it was kind of a big deal for Yellowstone at the time. That would have been like three years ago. Yeah. Know? Yeah. And uh, I was reading about them after that. Uh, but I don't think there was really that many. But to see one there was kind of a big deal. Yeah. I didn't realize it at the time. Yeah. All right, now we're going to take a look at a few elk here. That one right up above you, Cliff. Where'd you get him at? That bull was from Utah, um, and it was a. I drew a tag. I shot that bull on state land, actually. Um, Is that like a bugling mount? Is yeah. that what you call it? Yeah, you're exactly right. He got it in a bugle mount because these bulls are bugling. When I did, when I did get him, I hunted this particular bull three days. Um, I could hear him, but I could never get on him. And we finally uh, figured out where he was getting water at. Right. And I went up to Drainage and, and got him. But yeah, that's from Utah. And he, this, just to give you an idea, a bull like this, they, they go by score, Boone and Crockett score. Um, but gross, that was something like that would be a 340 inch bull. Okay. And this bull right beside it, I shot this bull here in Arizona with a muzzleloader. And this bull would actually score within an inch of the other one. So they're about the same, even though the racks look quite a bit different. Yeah. But they're both 340 inch bulls, yeah. What state was this one in again? This, this one right here was from Arizona. Arizona. Yeah. And, and what, that's inline muzzleloader? Is yeah. that a separate was, season out there for that? Or? They, they do. That was just another September hunt, yeah. So it was pretty nice, yeah. What about this one up here? That smaller bull that you're looking at up there, that was from New Mexico. New Mexico. Yeah, that, that, that was a November bull. You can see the difference in the way the color of the fur is. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that bull was, was shot in November. So you got some white tails on that wall, but that one in the middle doesn't look like a white tailed deer. No, that's a uh, that's a red stag, and that was from New Zealand. And this particular stag in New Zealand, everybody sees a picture of the great big giant stags with big racks, and and that, and that's what New Zealand's known for. 
but those are typically under five to 10,000 acre high fence operations. And I prefer to, to hunt free range and to hunt free range and just go out and look for something that's wild. That was the largest I could find right actual wow so that's why that was now this actually of, of all the animals i have this is a really cool thing for me because these four whitetails although they're not very large and look kind of old one is the first buck my son shot the one beside it's my dad's um this is a buck my grandfather shot and then that's a buck that i shot so uh, some of them date back quite a while they don't that impressive of amount anymore but to me it was kind of important just one of each generation so yeah, that's really yeah. nice yeah yeah that red stag is are they about maybe a little bigger than a mule deer or about the same size as a mule deer they would be between a, a mule deer and an elk okay kind of between that they have an elk look to them um the the ones with you see have real impressive headgear but like i say on this this particular one it's not that large but it was just it's the best i could find for that type of hunting right it's all relative to where you're at yeah you got a you got a grizzly bear up there. Yeah, that was from up in Alaska. Um, that was on a boat hunt. And uh, in fact, next spring, not this spring coming, we're going to go up for uh, another boat hunt up in southeast and look what, for some bigger ones. Is there any difference between a grizzly and a brown bear, or is it just where they live? Um, it's it, you're right on both accounts. If you look at the state of Alaska, you could draw a line across it and horizontally and they have a line and below that is a brown bear north of that is a grizzly and what they differentiate them between is mostly what they're eating so the brown bears their diet is more salmon so they just okay. become much larger so and if you talk to the old timers they claim on their skull a grizzly has a higher ridge of skull than a brown bear but uh biologists say it's just it's just what they're eating okay and they're yeah. Bigger. yeah and so the bigger the bigger the bears are probably the ones eating salmon correct so they'd be hunting off you know yep. they have hunts what you they find them off the boat and then you go ashore or something yeah like on this type of hunt what you'll do is you're, you're on a boat and you're traveling along and you're just glassing and we hunt them in the spring because the big boars are coming out looking for the females okay and they will just patrol those beaches and we'll watch them and when we see them we'll jump in a skiff try to get way out ahead yeah and, and then make a stalk and yeah that type of thing yeah and then we do them different ways i mean we hunt them we hunt the grizzlies in northern alaska now in an area we just just got opened up two weeks ago and there is so many bears in there grizzly bears it's uh yeah it's incredible so it'll be it's going to be a good follow-up there i'm sure you have any good uh, bear stories about anyone you know that got charged or anything like that um well i have actually had them kind of charge us when when i was on that moose hunt we talked about earlier yeah northwest terriers we had a bear come in on us there twice and it was a little hair raising you know yeah. but at 20 yards it stopped and i i was afraid that maybe somebody's gonna have to shoot it yeah just because it wasn't gonna stop but it did stop and kept their eye on it but uh like we had a gal cooking for us in the one camp and we were in tents and she kept the gun real close all the time because she had nine different bears coming in by that camp really and she was by herself in there all the time but uh yeah yeah but she smell food boy they're coming yeah yeah they do but i mean occasionally there are guys that you know, I've known of guys getting injured or actually even guys getting killed from them. Yeah. So it, it does happen. So what's that uh, beside the antelope there? Um, this, this is a fallow deer. And uh, I got this deer also in New Zealand. And it was a free range. So it's, it's a pretty nice fallow deer for a free range fallow. But um, it, was a, it was an old male. And uh, he was by himself up on this mountain. And, yeah it's just uh a little were they about the same size as a white tail or a little bit smaller a little smaller yeah, a little bit smaller yeah yeah in fact the young fellow that was guiding me was with me he carried it out whole really yeah i put it across his shoulders and took off but he was uh he was a young tough guy yeah <laughs> yeah so i know what this is it's a caribou right yeah this this caribou is called a mountain caribou okay and i got this caribou in northwest territories on that moose hunt Mm -hmm. But you have several different kinds of caribou. You have the mountain caribou, the Arctic Island we talked about earlier, um, Quebec Labrador caribou, and we have a woodland caribou that's from Newfoundland, and then we have the barren ground that's from Alaska. Okay. So I, I do have them all in here, and they're all a little bit different. So there's five different types of, of caribou. What do you call that on their nose there, or the horns on their nose? Or the... This, this is what they call a shovel. Um, this particular one has two, and they call them double shovels. 
which is something that's apparently kind of prized as a trophy hunter. And uh, so this had a double shovel. And these, these, these caribou, they feed off a of lichen, which is just a moss. That's, that's all they eat is this, it's L-I-C-H-E-N, and they just eat that. And I don't know if, if they use this to help dig at the moss or not, I really don't know that. Yeah. But uh, that's, that's what they feed on, and they, and they go in herds, and uh, they, like a lot of animals, they cycle, you know, high populations, low populations, just on their own. Yeah. Like nature just. Now, how, like how many were in the herd when you got that one? This one here, there was only three. Really? Yeah. Now different types of them go in larger herds usually. Okay. And this here, you usually uh, this type of caribou, you'll see groups of anywhere from a couple to about eight or nine. Okay. Yeah. Not eight. like I'm picturing hundreds or something. Right. Those would be the Quebec Lab Labrador caribou. Quebec Labrador, they they migrate through, and there's literally thousands of times. Yeah. But right now, those herds are all dipping, so th there's no seasons open on them right now. It hasn't been for a couple of years, and I don't expect it to be open for quite a few years, just because yeah. of the so they monitor all that really well, make sure they hunt when they herds way up and down. When yeah. It's, yeah. I mean, nowadays with the technology, they use the GPSs and tracking systems. And I mean, I used to be able to get maps and they could, yeah, I could see where, you know, not the animals you're going to go hunt them that way, but you can see how the herds are doing and where they're traveling and yeah. migrating just to see how the numbers are. Right. So it's, it's just interesting. It is. Now these look a little more familiar to me. Well, not really, because I never got one that big, but uh, where'd these white tails come from? Um, these, these three white toes right here, this, this buck I shot in Iowa, and this buck in the center here is also from Iowa, and then this buck here is from Kansas. And, and th these are nice bucks, but they're not monster bucks. Um, they're all gonna score in the high 140s, you know, as what Boone and Crocker would, would say. And then there's another one over here at the end, above these turkeys. Uh, my son shot this buck here. This buck here was like 150 inch type deer, and this was also in, in Iowa. It's just a nine point. For a nine point to, to score, that is pretty good. That is. So, but. Uh, if you had, I don't know if you've got an answer for this, but if you had to take a stab at what state do you think is makes the biggest whitetail bucks? I would say Iowa. Iowa. Iowa would be number one, Kansas would be number two, and Ohio would be number three. Okay. In, in my opinion. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm just going to tell you this uh, this framed hunting coat of mine. This was when I was a young man, 12 years old, and I wore this to I was probably about 14 or 15, and I had thrown it in the garbage about 10 years ago, and my wife dug it out, and I just had it framed and put it together with a bunch of pictures of that's nice, hunting, you know. And then, uh, and you probably can't see it in the camera, but like here's a picture. I was with some gentlemen in Africa, and two of these guys I actually had them sign it. A couple guys I know. Two of these gentlemen were the first two to ever kill all 29 North American animals with a bow. And that's quite a feat. Everything in North America with a bow. 29? All 29 species, yes. Everything we're looking at in here, they killed all of that and more with a bow. And those are the first two that ever did it. And then I've got a picture here. It's my dad with Fred Bear. I don't know if uh, the older gentleman, another picture of Fred, but the older guys watching this will know who Fred Bear is. Oh, he yeah. was one of the founders of Archery. Oh yeah, and, everyone knows uh, it Yeah, quite a, quite a guy. But it's funny, but you know, Mike, I'll get guys in here in their 30s. You know, I have hunters come in quite a bit, yeah. talking and visiting about different trips. And they'll look at these pictures and they'll like, who is that? And I'll say, well, that's Fred Bear. You know, you can see a sign thing for Fred Bear. I'm like, who is he? You know? <laughs> so, no, now they have no, no idea who he is. You know? Yeah. But, yeah, he was... Uh, was quite a guy so it was lucky my dad got to meet him a couple times and was that's down pretty his house cool. and stuff so yeah was, to, to me that stuff's good you know that is like got a little closer on this picture so which two guys you this is this is tom hoffman and jack frost jack frost was the first one to kill all 29 with a bow and tom's a very good friend is and he was the second guy to do it and jack actually is from pennsylvania he's a surgeon lives in Anchorage, and Tom's in the uh, car wash business in New York. Really? Yeah, that's what they do. And this, this is us on a, on a trip to Africa, and we're all just in a lobby getting ready to fly into a camp. And uh, just had a picture, and then I just had him sign it just for my own benefit. I just like that's it. That's pretty know. cool. Yeah. This is um, a few things from my dad. You know, my dad passed away about 15 years ago, and uh, I saved a lot of his stuff, his old binoculars, his back quiver and knotting knife and that type of thing and the arrows that they used to make themselves and uh, just made them out of dowel rods and 
cut their own feathers and uh, it was to, to that that's the kind of stuff that I like you know? yeah like this was this was a gun that my grandma had she lived to be a hundred and she uh -huh. had this as a kid yeah they kept it in the barn most barns had a little type of a gun this was a little 32 and it just kept it it really isn't worth anything but yeah it means know, a lot to you yeah it, it does so you know I, I like uh, that's the nice thing about hunting uh, growing up I mean we just it was a family thing it was tradition you know, yeah. you got a lot of time with your dad and your grandpa and uh, uncles and cousins and brothers and right. you know, that, that's 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 what you really you really like about it. You know, yeah. that's, that's what I liked about it. And then it just I'm the same lost. way. Now we talk about it all the time. You know, I, we we hunt every year around here in deer season. I I couldn't care less if I get anything. I'm just looking for that reason to get out there. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, I do know. And do what we do. Sitting in a tree, just watching the birds and yeah. the squirrels and and then deer so close just you know it's it, yep. it, it, it's just fun it is just fun yep so when i told melissa i was coming over here you know she said to me what she said i'll see you around midnight <laughs> because no, the hunting stories yeah cliff and i get to talking sometimes and like something they'll get eggs off us or something for the chickens and i'll be like i'll just run them over to cliff's and it'll be like three hours later i come home so melissa just called actually but i've only been here a couple hours but this was, I want to thank you. This is really interesting. I think a lot of people will find it interesting as well. I mean, I've hunted my whole life and I have not ever seen 90% of the stuff in this room in the wild. And it is fascinating to me. Uh, but I want to mention once again, Cliff's business, he's been in business for 30 years, right? It's your 30 year anniversary. Yeah. Yeah. It's Hunting Consultants Unlimited. And I know a lot of people that have gone on hunts uh, that Cliff has pointed them in the right direction and he's very good at what he does and uh, you, you are you got a really good name for yourself in this business so if you or anybody you know of is looking to go on you know kind of a once-in-a-lifetime hunt or something uh, I would recommend this would be the first phone call right here uh, you got anything to add yeah all you guys out there I'm sure are very envious because I am Mike's neighbor so <laughs> all you guys watch this show you realize they can do about anything he's my first call every time something <laughs> breaks firewood whatever Mike okay <laughs> yeah. so see so I'm actually one of the benefits here yeah. so but it's well, been enjoyable all right well I think that's all but oh, there is one more thing and we're not going to do it in today's video because it's going to run kind of long but there's a whole other room downstairs an Africa room and uh so there'll be an upcoming episode on that it's really cool but I think that's about it and uh, anyway if you enjoy these videos please hit the like button click subscribe and share them with your friends thanks bye-bye